all right thank you so much everyone for joining for the second session of public speaking master class how are you doing we are doing very well haritosh thank you okay. for all right great i assume dhiraj is also doing great and vanna who just dropped off will probably join back in a minute but yeah i'm doing thank fine thank you joining haritosh thank you great so you know what i'm going to do now i'm going to ask the status <laughs> so did you complete the assignment yes great i hear yes from pragya dheeraj how about you yes with yes with flying colors oh my god i can see a lot of colors in the background flying all right uh, vadna ji has also joined i i she informed me that she has also done quite a number of stories so how do we get started let's do uh, one story each so pick one of the stories that you have uh, written down out of the 20 25 stories that i asked you and let's go let's give it a couple of minutes or 2 to 3 minutes maximum hopefully that should suffice so who wants to go first i would go last because my story can be long all right <laughs> okay Vigya, do you want to go first? I can go first. Awesome. Yeah. Go ahead. I didn't craft it in the way of story, but I would like to give it a try. Go so, uh, you know, I like Harito shared in one of the previous session, like what how how he had fear of public speaking, and when he got to know about it. So, my fear started when I was very young, probably in school. so i wanted to i i was always amazed by you know magic shows and uh, things with magic so i wanted to be a magician so in one of the fancy dress competition i became magician and i was ready with all the magic tricks and everything so the the moment i went to the stage uh, what happened is i don't know what happened i saw people people were facing towards me and you know with all the growling faces and everything i became so scared that i forgot all the magic tricks i practiced and i was absolutely numb uh, unable to share whatever i wanted to share and the principal had to come and drag me down from the stage so that uh, more people can come and participate so that was my story how i was stopped and i think i was in fourth or fifth class at that time so that time i made a personal uh, opinion about myself that i should not be vulnerable in front of public and i should not be uh, in a situation which is risky so probably i i stopped taking the risk at that time <laughs> that is the one great, great story prigya <laughs> Uh, all of us have some other horror stories related to public speaking especially when it comes to but you no know, it's great to know we all have that such background so do you know where else can you apply this let's let's take it to our next level where you no know, we not only take the stories but also think about where can you apply this story i believe can be applied when you are trying to inspire any of the young folks any of the youngster when you are you no know, doing a probably a class for public speaking uh, you're all you can also do it for your young uh, associate who join you it could be this story in itself can be used across multiple places and that's what the purpose was behind these exercises that you come up the story and one story can be used across multiple places based on the need so great job let's give a big round of applause to uh, prigya so vanna ji do you want to go next i will have to go next <laughs> uh in the year 1988 i was going to kolkata with my brother for the purchasing of my daughter my uh, elder sister's wedding so the flight was about to take off at that time uh an ox just entered in the runway and the flight hit the uh, ox and it had to made an emergency landing just near a near a field and i was so scared means from before only i was very scared of flying i just ran to the do door and some 
boy he was one boy he was trying to open the door and i when the door was open i jumped from there and i, I started running on that field i thought this flight will blast so i was running and when i uh, saw back that my brother and no passengers got down from, from that flight so uh, when i came back there all the passengers were has to got down from the sleeper and many passengers they they know that in the sleeper they have to get down by sleeping and they got hurt on their uh, this waist back they said they got hurt and in that marriage everyone were appreciating me that i so show, showed a bravery it was my courage but i knew that it is uh, due to scared due to worry i jumped from the flight but everyone were appreciating me in that wedding function that's all amazing, amazing. now now how do you how can you use this story across various uh, one is that now sometime it could be very humorous story as well that now, at times we take steps uh, which we think is no we are scared we have to do but that becomes inspiration for so many and that's how you can start your no keynote or other place it could also be used maybe uh, where you're trying to say that no at times you should uh, go with your gut go with your instinct because no uh, more or less generally gut gut feelings are right so if you go there maybe you will not repent so it could be used but yeah great story and and love these stories when i hear from the participants so dheeraj now is time for you to actually present your story now you can't escape okay i'm just noting down my time like i wouldn't be taking more than 3 to 4 minutes so yeah let's start so from the day you told us to think about 25 stories so i started like thinking about like from where did i start so coming from there today i just shared around 15 to 16 stories over my instagram account so those stories were about like how i started my my journey from education and landed up a job in pcs like what was the background of that story so first thing i learned from you like audience first like you should always be giving something to the audience you should always be providing some value to the audience so that they can take out the point so first my motto was this thing in my mind like i have to present myself in a way that they can learn a lot from me so i started like your book theme like small town bigger dreams so i started with that th- that thing only like i just mentioned in a story the way i started my school that was a hindi medium school second in second story i mentioned about like in class 7th i jumped to an english medium basic school basic english medium school because that was the only school that was allowing me to in the next class they were not asking me to repeat the same class because other schools were asking me to repeat a same year in the same class like i jumped to class 7 from class 6 from a hindi medium school so they allowed me and when i learned the basics of english like when when we have to use we have we has what we do not have to what we have to use and what we do not have to use so when i learned that i was promoted as a like uh, in a competitions like i was allowed to participate in extempore speech competition english writing competition or whatever so those things get me ended up being a head boy of their school like i was a head boy like it is called school captain in your some schools and and my school it was head boy so i ended up being a head boy from class 1 to 11 i was a class topper okay i was a school topper as well as class in 5th and class 10 and from 1 to 11 i was a topper and in class 12 because of these extra curricular activities i was a head boy i was handling some responsibilities so i didn't get the first rank and that ultimately led me to the quota because my a triple rank was very badly screwed up so i ended up being in quota and from quota i just studied very hard the rank earlier i got was 4 lakh 8000 the rank now i got was 23000 all india rank and state rank was from 40000 to 229 so that got me into pannagar now the thing started like i was a studious student from one class 1 to 11 then an extra curricular student and now in college i was on my own like i can be anything like there is a tvf picture series and it said that to be a bc tera kaam hai behna so i was that only 
so in the first semester i had a very bad experience second semester i met some cool seniors who promoted me on the stage like one of these senior is aman godia sir so i would be telling about him in a brief so he asked me to perform like last time also i asked told about him so when i first performed on the stage my fear was half vanished out like i can perform i can perform really well the second year i was training my juniors to perform and i was preparing my team to perform the stage when pragya ma'am had left, left that college okay so in second year we performed in many skits and one of those skits were about the child but like whenever whenever a girl is born so it was about that one minute left one minute left okay <laughs> okay so in the second year i was performing in that skit like it was giving a message so that was about when the time gandev baba actually born okay so i i was looking for a way where i can promote my knowledge or my gyan on the social issues in my own funny way so we performed a funny skit with with a message and what happened last was like it is related to public speaking so what happened last was like i was in the same situation like i was running behind the time okay the skit was has to be done on the 10 minutes and we were already we had already taken 12 minutes or 30 minutes so in the last i have to perform everything and i had created a lot of dialogues okay so happened was like the daughter that we had raised from birth to marriage she was being murdered by she was she was murdered or she just committed suicide after her marriage because of these women issues so what happened like the girl was lying on the stage and i was so much into full of energy and i just overacted like this much overacting i done i did was because the villain of that skit like his husband her husband was the villain of the skit he just came and bhai chup ho ja bhai ho gaya ho gaya let's move back bhai ho gaya over acting kar rahi bhai chal wapas and i was still there in the in the and that made me think about no i should have to control over this emotional part on the stage because these things can hamper my 13 minutes 13 minutes performance just like right now i am just taking my time to end this conversation here itself yeah that is all thank you dheeraj you really took us to a roller coaster journey and i think you gave us a full biography of you in 4 minutes which is not easy to say uh, but i definitely i think you can take actually parts of these uh, the whole roller coaster and actually individual parts can become you know i could see at least four five story coming out of it you don't one of the things that we'll probably discuss a bit today in storytelling is you don't have to tell each and every detail about storytelling you have to tell sufficient detail so that as an audience i understand and if you try to set up it's called setup and if you try to put everything in the setup the audience tend to lose the interest so you have to make sure that you pick one story and give enough details and then talk about take through the emotions and then come back and then maybe share other story part of it for example the story about uh, uh, you over over uh, going overboard with all the things that could be one story a uh, story of you going through you no know, on top of the studies to going so low and then again reaching to a respectable state could be another story so there are multiple story within that so that could be something that you can but you no know, great great story great job i am proud of all of you uh, great job i'm so happy you no know, you should be happy because 90% people when they are given a uh, exercise an assignment they come up with excuse that no i was busy i was ill i couldn't do that i had this meeting i had that call but you guys did it and you did it brilliantly so give a good round of applause to yourself it's very important to acknowledge the progress so as i said earlier uh, today we are going to discuss a very very interesting topic which is how do champions prepare their content let me know if you can see the screen can one of you unmute and confirm yes we can see. do you see the full screen yes yes you can see the full screen okay so the topic is how do champions prepare the content we are going to cover a lot today about before going to a presentation before going to a keynote before going to a speech how can you make sure that you have enough content with you enough stories with you enough preparation done so let's start off with a beautiful quote by a person called george bernard shaw who was a irish poet and has done a lot of things but this is a very beautiful quote that the single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it has taken place a lot of times we think that whatever we know uh, the the audience will also know the same but most of the time it is an illusion and that is why we need to clarify what we are doing so as i said we are going to have a content creation process 
it's a five step process for any the uh, any of the things that you're going to do it could be a speech it could be a keynote and you can take this you can take it for a make it for a five minute speech or you can also make it for a two day presentation or you no know, or maybe you no know, multiple weeks seminars and things like that how do you start step 1 is called discovery and goal setting what is what exactly is discovery and goal setting it's basically one goal every speech like i just pointed out to dheeraj right every speech every topic that you're going to it has to have one goal one action what is that one thing that audience want to know what is that one thing that you want them to do do you want them to hire you do you want them to endorse you do you want to get an increment do you want to be accepted as an interviewee do you want them to vote for something what is that one intent they also call it as a what is your uh, central theme right so you need to have that beforehand before you go into uh, you know content creation process right and then next thing sir there are some techniques that you can use for example uh, many a times when i asked to when i'm asked to give a keynote or you know, any longer presentation i said that i want to have a meeting beforehand so that i know what is the theme and these are some of the techniques that you can do so i have a meeting with organizers and you no know, i it is an yesterday i gave a presentation in a company where i was talking about mentoring and how it can help uh, so i had couple of meeting with the hr of the company and also the person who referenced me to actually understand that what is that they are looking for do they want uh, to uh, they want me to focus more on the mentors or they want me to focus more on the mentees uh, what is the age so you need to know all of these you, you can do interviews you can do anonymous surveys as well to know exactly what they're looking for because it is like when you don't know the uh, end goal you can go anywhere right so you need to know what is that you're looking for if it is for example a speech a toastmaster speech uh you want to know what is the project that you're working on what is that you know end goal of this particular speech so when you know that then you can apply these techniques to um, find out more and more detail so that is step 1 which is called discovery and goal setting let's move on to uh, step 2 what is the step 2 the step 2 is one of my favorite steps to say and that is called brainstorm what exactly is brainstorm does anyone know what exactly is brainstorm yeah the, it actually means to explore the like whatever we can do with the brain by the thinking part mm -hmm. mainly whatever we can add or something like we can just like this example content creation like what all we can think about what mm -hmm. we actually want to deliver so that is something where brainstorm i guess Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely right. So basically, brainstorm is yeah, going with the plain state and listing down whatever thing, uh, whatever you see in the screen. Uh, I'm putting it. Uh, so what happened is in twenty, I believe it was twenty nineteen, that I was asked to give a keynote in one of the Toastmasters district, and uh, the topic was uh, improving the club culture, club culture or something. i had no idea what i'm going to talk about and i had about 3 to 4 weeks of time the only thing that i did was i went to the market brought a big uh, chart paper and pasted it on a wall and then day in day out whenever for next uh, a week or so day in day out whenever i thought about anything that could affect the culture of the club i started noting down that why you'll see different colors of pen on different writing and if you're not able to read my writing i don't uh, uh, i i see you should not worry about that because i sometimes i also don't understand my handwriting but the intent is i came up with a clean slate i put the central theme about what exactly is i'm going to do and then started jotting down everything that i could remember at different point of time and this is what i later no i didn't know it's called mind mapping previously but then i later got no it's a very useful technique that you can use to actually generate idea for example uh, prigya is uh, trying to be a product owner she has been given a, a presentation to present her product now she can get a uh, chart paper and put the name of the product or whatever she, whatever is the theme or title of the particular presentation and then she can start putting it all the ideas over there one thing to note here is 
no idea is a bad idea at the time when you are trying to utilize your right brain don't involve your left left brain what i mean by that is don't analyze that you no know, is this idea good uh, is this worth it is this you no know, will that make sense uh, i think this is stupid don't worry at all whatever you feel like is related to topic it's coming in your mind just start putting it there the other uh, the right hand side that you see is when i started working on my book in 2020 it was lockdown i thought i'm going to write my book small town bigger dreams um and i started noting down all the different instances that had happened uh whatever story i could remember i i was betrayed by somebody i didn't like somebody or i i appreciate i love the appreciation i felt grateful whatever i remember i started using this pasted notes and uh, put on a particular wall of my home, house and that's how this came into picture so that is the uh, same thing you can also use softwares there is a software called xmind and there are other mind mapping software as well where you can do the same thing where you can actually uh, put the central theme and i'm going to stop sharing for a second and share you the other uh, uh, other xmind if i may open let me just see okay so i'm sharing this tool called xmind and you can see i actually did the 21 days live to my book launch and that time i used this tool uh, basically to start writing what will be that different days who i'm going to target who will be my sessions will i be doing a keynote session will i be writing email i started putting everything out i didn't plan out that what will i say but this kept evolving with time so so coming back to the point that we need to actually brainstorm and when i'm when we are brainstorming we don't need to restrict and analyze that now what what is the idea that we are talking about is that making sense is it with respect to de- this directly or not what would our de- audience think if i use this topic or not at that point of time we don't need to do what we need to do is take out just take a download from whatever is going in our mind and put it right there then and there so that is step number 2 on how can you uh, do content creation now what's what's step number 3 the step number 3 is where you're going to use the right side of the brain which is called analyze and ask so you have uh, then the first part where you did the discovery and you find out what what is that one thing that you're going to talk about what is the central theme now you did the brainstorming you listed out all the ideas whether it's pen paper chart paper or or no software anything now is the time to actually analyze and ask question and how do you do that number one is you can actually prioritize all the points that you have mentioned so if, for example if you have 100 points you can actually prioritize that this is probably category 1 category 2 or no you want to do 1 2 2 whatever you want a b c whatever the ranking mechanism you want to do but you want to prioritize and rank those ideas then you want the at this point you can actually eliminate as well something you thought was related but it's not making sense at this point of time you can actually eliminate that strike it out or you no know, take it away and the third thing is which is very important is the time boxing what i mean by time boxing is if you have a uh, 5 minute speech you can't be talking seven ideas right it has to be congruent with the time if you have uh, say 30 minutes of keynote you know the central theme you can probably incorporate three or four points related to this thing you can probably have two to three or maximum four stories and then some transition and everything but if you try to include 10 stories or 17 points in 30 minutes it won't work so you need to make sure that you time box your presentation in such a way that it is congruent and you won't have to either elongate which means that you you don't have anything left you have a presentation of 30 minutes and you have material only for say 10 minutes and now you are gasping for air like what should i do for next 20 minutes 
and the other way around as well that you are asked to speak for five minutes and you have material worth uh, one hour and now you are rushing to the last thing that you want to do and we're going to cover it in the next session is how to wow your audience but the last thing that you want to do is rush through your material because if you do that people will not remember who was there or they would say okay i i remember the person who was there but let's not invite him next time so you don't want to rush through so make sure that your material and your time is congruent and typically for a, it it would be for a 5 minute thing it would be one topic one story one thing and and then you can for a 30 minutes it could be probably 3 to 4 but it should not be more than that so let's do a mid uh, check in between any question so far yeah so aritosh like mm -hmm. by time boxing i guess i presented the perfect example just a few minutes back like in the end towards the end i was rushing through my content like yeah. what i had prepared and i haven't reached the final like from yeah. where i started like i started with how i ended up being in tcs so i ended up only with the second year content i haven't passed the third year and final year so exactly i guess that is a perfect yeah. example exactly and and good that you are able to recognize yourself rather than anybody else when we self recognize it works well so that is why i said it's and that is why i pointed out also that no you you can have four five story during that time that you spoke and you don't need to tell a lot what you need to do is tell something which your audience will remember uh, so that is why i say if it is five minutes you can't be telling five different stories because that won't help it is one story one point typically that could be the ratio any other question from anyone is it making sense up down okay great let's uh, move on with with whatever is the next step so we have covered discovery and goal setting we have covered brainstorming analyze and ask and there is a problem with the animation but you see the next step which is called incorporate stories now one thing that you should always and that's one of the reason i ask people to actually uh, start collecting that story in the story bank or story file or different people call it different ways is that once you know the theme once you know the time once you have identified different points that's when you can use the story bank to actually incorporate the right stories for example your theme is about uh, uh no how to overcome fear now that's when vandana ji can go back to the story of when she took the uh, plunge and and went uh, went ahead and then everybody followed her that's when you take out that story put it there and it will work like a charm right so that, so collecting story is one part of it and then going through this process and trying to see which is that in this for example in this presentation itself the only reason i brought this particular mind mapping is that because i wanted to share that story of how i went through the book writing process how i went through that keynote preparation so that's how that i had this material first and then i incorporated stories so that it becomes more impactful so that's how you also need to do you went through you go through the process and then at the step 4 you incorporate stories that's why and that's why they say facts tell stories set if i keep on saying you uh, there is so much of value in uh, doing x and y and all what is i tell you that no i uh, if you remember the first story that i told about when in the conference room i kind of embarrassed myself now you every time you think about me you probably will remember that no he has gone through that journey of you no know, being embarrassed to uh, actually winning uh, you know awards in terms of speaking in various countries so i can tell you i've i've you know given so many speeches i failed so many speeches but when i tag a story along that it becomes more easy for us and the reason for that is our brains are actually wired to remember stories you know uh, thousands and thousands of years back we were programmed to hear stories and that thing has still continued just like the fear of public speaking has been there you no know, if you still see all this if you tell a small baby no i'm going to do a powerpoint presentation they may not like but if i if you tell me and my daughter comes and like can we have a story 
and she gets excited right so whether you are a 4 or 5 year old or whether you are 90 year old we are programmed to listen to stories and especially the story which are impactful that's the reason you no know, we watch uh, those series which i we feel that oh that has got a brilliant story or brilliant plot versus you no know, this one is boring and that, what is the criteria this one is impactful story versus this one is boring story so that is why our brains are wired and that is why you need to incorporate stories in your presentation so so important now we talked about and i said i'm going to cover a few things about story so very brief about what can you do in the story there are some basic elements number one is the setting before you go on to tell your story you need to set up provide setup where is that how is it uh, was it 1994 or 2019 morning evening it could be time it could be place it could be the people it could be the location but you need to provide a basic setup now this is where a lot of people actually uh, either don't do at all setup or do too much of setup so either they will say oh, they will right away go through with the story without providing a background or they will tell so much of background that people is already you know, turned off and they don't want to hear anything else so this is where uh, the balance is the key here second is characters you need to have at least one or preferably two or more character in the story unless you have for example in dhira story at different point of time there were different characters he was a character throughout but then he had the senior he had prigya also there and then he has you know schools uh, some characters from school so you need to have different characters identified and then also talk about their tra traits like was it a no very strict person or very you know a soft person was it a long person short person a few adjective of the character will help audience visualize that what exactly you're talking about so that's second third dialogue you need to have dialogue in your stories because if you just keep on narrating it becomes boring and if you want to bring more spice to your stories you need to have dialogues you need to have vocal variety and the best way to incorporate vocal variety is through dialogue so you need to have dialogue in your stories they there should not be any story without emotions uh, there are seven definite emotions that we have and the story should portray one of the emotion it could be of happiness enthusiasm sadness uh, anger frustration any of those emotions should be there if there is emotionless story uh, it's not going to stick with your audience it has to have a conflict right if it is just going can you go and watch a movie where everything like ek tha raja ek thi rani dono mar gaye khatam kahani will that entice you versus what happened there is a conflict scene and you see now opening of a movie scene there is all blood around there is one hero who's about to die and there is a villain and he's surrounded by all the villains what is that that's a conflict you know this person is hero but he's probably going to die what happens next so that conflict that hook should be there in your story to start off and maybe take it towards the end where you reach the climax and and there is a protagonist which who wins typically and then the last point is the resolution what happened if there was conflict how did the conflict resolve what was the done by characters you can mention through dialogues that was the reason that you no know, this got resolved and one thing which also includes in resolution is what is the take away for the audience what is the lesson that they learn so that also is part of resolution so these are a few basic elements of a story telling when we talk about incorporating stories all good yes dheeraj yeah what is the like i just forgot about the setting part the first point of this basic elements mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. was the setting is the so setup like, like no where exactly is this story like we say na it was in 2008 i was one year in my corporate job so that is all part of setup i'm setting you up to go to a particular scene right so it's it's the information that you provide so that you take your audience to one particular scene you don't want to take your audience to a full year of the scenes right you want to take the audience to a particular scene so that is the setup that it was a conference room it was 2008 and i was getting ready to present that's one scene right uh, or for example in case of vandana 
the flight was actually almost about to crash and i was worried that's a scene right so you want to take that it's like uh, prelude to the actual conflict coming up so you you tend to provide that two three four line setup so that people are in tune with where they are going okay Okay, so that that means the inception of that story, like from where we are I going know. to start yes. the story. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. Perfect. Yeah, I just want to ask one more yes, thing. Yes, yes, that we want to add one story in every speeches. There should At be least. a story. Huh. The, that story should be related to us or any other stories also. We can put in that speech, and as a character, we will be there. I will be there as a character. Is it like that? Yeah, so uh, I said incorporate stories. I didn't say incorporate your stories because you no, know, at times we we have not gone through the journey. We know somebody else. For example, one of the story, my favorite story is from APJ Abdul Kalam. Uh, so when India was trying to launch the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle uh, in the very first year, India failed. And at times, Satish Dhawan was his uh, Dr. Kalam's boss, and uh, he said to Kalam, "You stay inside. I'll go and handle media." And he went ahead and he handled media and he said, we are going to launch within a year. And next year, they worked super hard and the whole team got motivated. Next year, India actually successfully launched that polar satellite launch vehicle. And that year, Satish Dhawan did not go out. He actually said, Kalam, you go out there and handle the press. And the takeaway was that whenever you have a failure, as a leader, you want to take, lead your team from front and you want to bear the consequences. But whenever, whenever there is a success, you want your team to get the credit. You want them to actually uh, be in limelight versus you yourself as a leader. So that is story. I was not there. No, none of you were there. But you can incorporate that story when you're talking about leadership, when you're talking about when you go ahead. So incorporate stories. Best stories are when we incorporate our own stories. Because then we can really, we can go through all that same emotion. But if it is not in the context, because everything we are talking about is with respect to audience. If the sto our stories are, there are no story of us which are in context and it is not making sense to put it, we can very well put stories of others as well. I hope that answers the question. All right. So that's step number four done. Discovery, brainstorm, analyze and ask, incorporate, incorporate stories. Can you guess what would be the last step? Any guesses? Take away from that story. That is part of the stories. That is part of, we are talking about content creation, right? Okay. In the story, you should have a takeaway. Sorry? Summarize. Summarize is again part of story. Prigya, you were saying something? Finalize the, finalize the content, finalize the content. Kind of, yeah. Finalize the content. Yeah. Getting really, really close. Yeah. Summing up like what all you need to present. Okay. Enough of guessing it. It's the time yeah. to say refine and test, right? The great stories are actually not written. They are rewritten. What you want to do is go out there, practice the story take the feedback, incorporate feedback, and then again practice. And you have to, it's a cycle. You have to keep refining and testing. And that is why it's the last step where you want to practice. And then, so one way is, for example, if you're part of an organization like Toastmaster or Dale Carnegie or other, you can go out there and practice. What is the other way? The other way is record and watch. Now, when I say record and watch, a lot of people say, no, you know, I, I don't want to see myself in video i don't like my own voice i don't like my uh, video guess what others have to go others have to see you others have to go through that so record and i'm going to tell you four ways actually when you record a speech to see uh, the patterns number one is when you are giving a speech you're recording it record it straight away which means that you no know, you hear the audio you see the video exactly the same way it is Second way is after that, once you do is you record, uh, you see the video, but turn off the audio. And that will give you the clue that are you having any distracting manners? Are you uh, feeling less confident or overconfident? You can analyze without even listening to audio. This will give you the clues. The third is you actually put your headphone on 
and put off the video don't watch just listen to your audio listen to what are the kind of words that you are using are you repeating certain words are you using lot of clutch words or are you doing it perfectly or what else you could have done so listen to your own voice that will give you a lot of feedback and the fourth and final way is you actually increase the speed of your video so instead of going on 1x you go 1.5x 2x what will happen is you will see your video in a very fast mode and you will definitely be able to identify what are the distraction i'm having or you no know, i'm i'm kind of focusing more on the left versus right or i'm i'm kind of you no know, looking little timid or little coward or i'm coming very vibrant which probably is over the board so you will be able to identify those patterns you know remember we are our worst critic and you want to utilize that uh, in a way that helps you so if you want to record and watch first of all watch then put your sound off and only see the video then put your video off and only listen to audio and then uh, fast forward so that you can analyze and then take the feedback and once you follow this process your speeches will keep on becoming better and better and better okay any question on this okay cool uh we are doing actually little late on time but let's move on now i'm going to share a few tools uh, for you to do content creation so number 1 is called structure now i don't need to tell it again and <laughs> toastmaster we harp it again and again but your your story your sorry your speech your content should have a definite opening which means that no you don't want to the worst way to start a speech is thank you so much for having me or no you know what uh, please this is my first time speaking outside apologies you don't want to do that you're going to you're going to crash your credibility in a microsecond you want to start in a way that provides the hook to the audience you want to start with a quote you want to start with the startling statement you want to start with a, a scene setup that's perfect way but you don't want to say thank you so much or no mr x and mr y and chairman or toastmaster or whatever it is you want to have a great start opening that momentum then you transition to if you want to address audience another thing go on with your body which is your content that you have created with the proper transition and the end should not be again a thank you the end should be a conclusion and you want to end your speeches end your talk on a high note what happens is in a typical speech the audience remembers your opening and your closing they may or may not remember your your body or in between so you want to make sure your opening is grand and your conclusion is grander or much grand so in between yes you need to keep it high but those were the two places you need to keep yourself high your energy high and your audience motivated that's the beauty of a structure because they will anyways not remember do you remember everything that i say after this speech or after this session you may or may not uh, you may find the video and look at or you can look at the notes but you will definitely remember that we started with people telling their stories will end on something which is you know what is coming up in the next session so you want to make sure that your opening and your conclusion is on a really high note so that your audience remember okay now i'm going to go through even though i'm not a language expert i picked up these things uh, over the years i'm going to share some of this you want to use some of these tools while you're writing this is called anaphora what is anaphora when you want to uh, start multiple sentences in the same way like in in this example you say no we shall fight in this we shall fight we shall fight so when you do this it gets really it easy to register right uh, martin luther kings the speech that we heard last time no he said that no i have a dream x i have a dream that i have a dream that so that that keeps your audience engaged and like okay something else is coming with this particular phrase right so that's one the reverse of this or the other tool that is there is called apiphora where you actually reverse kind of reverse you end on a particular phrase 
for example of the people by the people for the people so that's a kind of epiphora because your ending of these uh, phrases are being repeated and it kind of makes a pattern for our mind the third tool that you want to use is called alliteration what is alliteration when you have the uh, first letter being repeated there's a lot of english example but if you remember in hindi we used to have chandu ke chacha ne chandu ki chachi ko chandi ki chammat se blah 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 it's all starting with uh, one letter cha right so you want to use that alliteration in your uh, in your content in your speeches in your talks because that sticks with your audience right the reason they say stories that stick because that is also alliteration of s and s and now after this uh, class when you go back and look at different titles you will start finding alliteration everywhere because that's how people try to incite you people want to know uh, make you notice so that's number 3 number 4 is called metaphors what is a metaphor basically you try to describe a per- a thing with another thing which is unrelated for example very famous is you are apple of my eye you don't literally become apple of somebody's eyes right but you are trying to compare two different objects in a way right uh, you say uh, it's boring like hell now there is no hell that you see actually but when you compare boring with hell that's actually you are putting a metaphor right so you can also use metaphor when you are trying to compile your content you are trying to create your content and last of this which is very important is called power of 3 what is the power of 3 you actually keep three different kind of uh, adjectives or or things in uh, in your stories for example is going to be impactful powerful and everlasting now i said three it becomes easy for us to register in the mind i can say two also that probably may not go there and if i say four it will be too much now dheeraj is has done stand up comedy he might know about it that a you know, lot of comedians they actually set it up by using the first second and then they change it with the third and that actually results into a humorous laughter right for example i can say uh, haritosh is you no know, energetic and uh, let's see haritosh is energetic and bright and non alcoholic now when i say the third one which is opposite of the other two there is a spur of you no know, humor that is coming out so you can use power of 3 uh, in the regular way where you put three adjectives three phrases you can also use it for uh, turning it into your magic of humor as well where you take people uh, two on a straight line and then change it to three which people are not expecting and if you look at any of the comedians they use it left right and and a lot yeah left right and center as they say uh, you will try to analyze that's how they uh, you know engage their audience they will take you to a journey and then they'll switch the lane so that's the power of three so we have covered a lot uh, any question so far uh, if i'm not wrong like the power of three is something like 1 2 and 3 One, two, and in simple words, one, two, and three in one, simple words. Like yeah, exactly, exactly. Like someone started in English and suddenly jumped to another set yeah. of language in simple words. Correct, correct. So you set up the for humor. There are two uses of power of three. One is where you simply use it uh, for describing something, right? No, he's the stories are powerful, <laughs> impactful, and uh, everlasting. So that's you're going on a straight line. Uh, but it is still powerful what you are t- telling about is the humor one the other part where you actually take up like one two and you will expect the three should come but you say one two and three uh, so that's you actually change the line and that's where the humor comes to when when does the humor come when our minds are tricked into something and that's when we realize oh i was i was tricked and we start laughing it's a deeper concept and i do not do not claim to be the humor expert uh but <laughs> lot of lot of uh, stand up comedians lot of humorous speeches in incorporate this power of 3 okay so any question on we covered a lot actually in terms of content creation uh any question so far uh if anyone do not have the question does not have the question then i have 
another question the alliteration part like mm-hmm. like what exactly would alliteration part would play a role in our story like if i am on a serious note i am presenting something on a serious note in a office meeting mm-hmm. and they like should or should not use the like in english or in hindi like whatever like pital ke patile mein papita pila pila theek hai aisa hi kuch hota hai correct correct so wahan pe iska kya use hoga see uh, these are tools you don't have to actually use it every time it will depend on if you are uh, making a presentation for example if you have a demo of the features right you have different demo of the features now you can either tell the name in alphabetical order or somehow you bring that in the way that all of the name starts with c and then you say if you li- listen about av management they say in a four p's of management five c's of this six l of this what is that it's all alliteration example of even though they'll say okay four l's is language literature literacy whatever it is no it may or may not sometime fit in also but you will find that that no they try to use that concept of alliteration there as well so you can actually use it for term in lot of speeches actually start with alliteration right no stories that stick or no uh yeah lot of lot of lot of these can be used even for making your titles as well alliteration title the the point here is for your audience to remember it easily how best you can make it make it for them to remember okay okay so i got it like uh, like last uh, on october i had the certification of scaled agile safe if you have heard about it safe agile as a list so i did a certification and there was like it was like three i's of these three p's of exactly. these and three s of now i can remember exactly, this. exactly. so that's that's how that's where they incorporate alliteration because that's easy now now you can remember okay there were three i's so first was integrity second was increment what was the three and then you'll try to remember everything with innovation. i and then you find that yeah innovation. yeah exactly innovation improvement whatever it innovation, was innovation improvement yeah anything anyway. and that's how you should actually do that right uh, that's how you should actually think about when you're going to present that now what how can you bring it in the way that uh, uh, it <coughs> comes from in the form of alliteration it comes in the form of group of 3 and it becomes you no know, impactful yeah that is nice cool aritush can we uh, like for written english also are these the techniques or are there there Absolutely. anything extra as well anything extra uh, i'm pretty sure there are so many extra uh, this is for written as well as oral and what i lot of people do and do not do at times i write my speeches and that time now you can actually see this patterns come on or you can incorporate patterns but uh, there are many more techniques uh, these are these are some of the techniques it's not the exhaustive list and you can find if you go to google and start writing uh, anaphora and uh, metaphors it will automatically start showing you 10 other things and you can search there because uh, i think uh, developing written content is also now equally important so <laughs> actually yeah so that is why i say that you need to have content you and there are different uh, people do different things some people write word to word some people write like i said earlier you know put the pointers and i know what i'm going to talk about i don't have this whole uh, session written to me somewhere and i'm not reading from script the last thing that you want to do is read from script because then it will look like you no know, i'm a newspaper anchor from a very local channel <laughs> who doesn't know what is going to say so you don't want to read uh, letter by letter but you can actually keep the points but if you're trying for example you're trying to write a white paper you're trying to write an article it's a good idea to look at you know where else can you in, incorporate some of these tools and there are other tools as well yeah like for me i i'll say like i have to write small small bits for linkedin because i think that is the only marketing strategies which lawyers can in, incorporate we can't advertise and things like stuff it's we are barred by law to do so okay okay now that's a then actually it's a great because uh, i see a lot of people who actually put in linkedin article they say that no five c's of vision or no uh, five c's of visionary leadership and then they'll take a one is could be courage other could be commitment other could be you know communication and then you can you know elaborate on individual points and also you can 
start doing that for your no if that helps your market you can do that okay cool so we are coming towards the end now it's very important that i give you some assignment and then we discuss about the next we are meeting so what do you want to do next okay so let's let's do this uh, you went through the basics of storytelling today let's take from your bank itself or if you want to incorporate any other story as well take one story for next time and in, try to incorporate as many as elements as possible i'll send it in the groups chat that know what are the different elements for a reminder try to do the same approach of 2 to 4 minute yeah, i'm saying 4 for dheeraj but yeah 2 to 3 minutes dheeraj will get another 1 minute bonus <laughs> and take one story and try to incorporate all the elements and see how better we can make it sounds good yeah okay elements means you will only provide the elements yeah yeah it, it's there right so the elements are i will put it in the chat the elements are set up the elements are character emotion so try to see in your story can you bring some emotion can you bring some character can you bring some conflict can you have the resolution so these are the different uh, uh, elements that you can incorporate in your story so so far you have been doing it unconsciously or missing out on unconsciously now what i want you to do is do it consciously then you know, see okay do do i you write the story and say, i think i'm missing the setup now let me add couple of lines for setup or i don't really have any conflict so let me have the conflict come up or maybe choose other story where i have more conflict things like that so that when you consciously try to incorporate these points that's where you know it becomes better and sticky mm -hmm. cool All right, Dheeraj, I'm meeting again. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Any other? No. In any speech, is mm -hmm. it necessary that story should be in the beginning or in the middle or in the anywhere the situation? Wherever it fits well. There is no hard and fast tool. And and if somebody say that it is a hard and fast tool, you should stay away from that person. there is no hard and fast rule what what is your intent like no what is that audience will find useful that should be the prime thing if you feel that your audience will get more value by starting with the story start with that if you feel that ending with the story you take talk about a concept but in the story with the application of the concept that's also good so you you have to have that end goal in mind that what will my audience think about and what in what way it will be more beneficial to them when you do that you will get the answer but if somebody says you have to have it in like story yeah. and then point and then story point yeah you don't have to this is somebody is trying to create a clone of them and you should not be that clone yeah okay. sorry my phone was switched off like i was connected to the phone and it just got switched off no a few minutes back so no. i hope i didn't miss anything important No, you missed the most important thing. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Now we just okay. talked about the assignment. Uh, we are gonna have uh, you gonna have one story again, and this time, cog. Yeah, this time be conscious of all the different aspects of storytelling that we discuss. So look at: Do you have setup? Do you have conflict? Do you have resolution? Do you have characters, emotions, dialogue? And try to put it consciously so that. Uh, it becomes even better i'll put again those elements in the chat, in the group so that you remember uh, so become a better storyteller this time so that's the that's the assignment for you cool okay good uh, let me stop the recording so